Tonight is my first night of galaxy season here from the front yard. I've got my brand new mount, the Skywatcher CQ350 here with me. We've got our nine and a quarter. We've got our ZWO cameras. We've got the ASI Air. We've got everything hooked up and connected the way it needs to be. And we just have to wait till it gets dark now. And for me, this is actually going to be first light with this mount since I've gotten it. Now, I did buy it used from a gentleman who already kind of tuned it by putting new bearings and everything inside of it, which is really wonderful. And supposedly it performs even better than it did originally out of the box. So I'm really excited to give it a go with this 30 pounds or so of payload on it. Now, this mount has everything an astrophotographer could want and need. It's got ports off the side. It's got ports off the front. It's got ports everywhere on this thing which is really, really great for hooking up all of your USB cameras and your mini PCs and everything that you need to rock and roll for your astrophotography rig. And it also boasts a massive 77 pound payload capacity, which in my opinion, I don't need that much, but my equipment is verging on the 30, sometimes 40 pounds or so, which does encroach on that rule of thumb for astrophotography where you should stay safely about 50% of your total payload capacity. Now enough about the mount, let's get into what we're gonna be photographing tonight. We're gonna to be going after the Leo triplet, which is about 35 million light years away from us here on Earth. Send the constellation Leo towards where its back hind legs would be if you're looking at the photograph of Leo the lion. It's going to be high in the sky tonight for us, pretty much all the way through the night, which is why I figured I would take this opportunity to take a photo of it. And we're going to be using the Celestron 9 and a quarter with the Hyperstar like I normally do for my astrophotos. But the reason why I chose the 2600 MC Pro tonight is because we're going to have less noise, and it also frames the Leo triplet almost perfectly in there. Now, the Leo triplet, of course, is M65, M66, and NGC 3628. Those are the three main prominent members that a lot of people know as the triplet. These are all about ninth magnitude or so, so it's going to be relatively bright enough for us to capture underneath the light pollution. Now, the only thing is, is that I've never really tried to photograph galaxies from light pollution before. Normally, I've done them from a remote site or a really dark sky, but I've never really tried it under light pollution. And I've read a lot of different forums, and some people suggest a UV filter, and some people suggest just doing it just raw the way it is. So I'm going to try it raw because a lot of people have reported that if you do a broadband filter that is meant for light pollution contrast, sometimes you can kind of wash out the detail of the target. And I don't want to do that. I want to get as much of the structure and natural color as I possibly can. Now, I know the light pollution is going to absolutely wreak havoc for gradients and all kinds of false pixels, things like that in the camera, but hopefully we can get rid of those in post-processing. It is going to be clear tonight and tomorrow. I'm hoping to just set this exact same rig up just like it is tonight and tomorrow and let it run as far as I can before it hits this tree right here. So I'm hoping to get total. I'm hoping to exceed above 10 hours if I possibly can on this project just to number one, try the mount out, but also to see if we can capture a really nice photo of the Leo triplet. Now, with the Hyperstar on here, we're going to be 530 millimeters, so we're going to be nice and wide field. But also with that, we're going to be at f2.2, which is going to really help us from the light pollution because that'll allow the maximum amount of light into the camera that we possibly can. Let's just wait now until it gets dark and get rocking and rolling on the Leo triplet. After two nights of really successful imaging, I was able to clock 
9.63 hours. So we were just below that goal that I wanted for this project, but that's okay. We did have to discard the last 10 to 15 frames or so due to some really high clouds that came in. We had a storm front that was blowing in, and unfortunately that just kind of ruined the last half hour or so of imaging, but that's the way Mother Nature rolls. Now the mount performed amazingly, 0.3 to 0.5 RMS. So half an arc minute or less is really good guiding. I didn't lose a single frame due to any guiding inaccuracies or issues with the performance. So I'm really super happy with that. The AM5 that I've had recently has actually been giving me a lot of problems with the tracking. In fact, I've been able to lose actually almost 20% of my imaging some nights with that mount because it'll spike in RA or deck and it'll blur the star images and that just unfortunately discards that whole frame for me. So I'm really happy to report that the Skywatcher one is not only solid and stable, but it also is really good with performance as well. And that's exactly what I was looking for. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy my photo of the Leo triplet from my light pollution front and backyard in Bortle 8. Until next time, clear skies to you.